Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us again. I'm Tara and this is Catherine and we are from Lumera Grief and Bereavement Care. And um, we are here to share reviews of more children's books for you that you um, may find helpful in your classroom. Uh, a gentle reminder that Lumara is here in service of those who are uh, bereaved and experience losses in many different forms. Um, we firmly believe in the sense of community uh, to grieve um, in conversation with others. And uh, we hope that these books can support those kind of conversations in your classroom. This project comes um, because we know loss is, is present in your classrooms. Again, loss of many forms. And uh, we know that grieving is a healthy response to loss. And at the same time, we know that classrooms are really busy places. And so we really wanted to put together some tools, some books, some, some activities that we hope will be in uh, support you in those conversations. Um, so again, my name is Tara. Um... Tara Such, I'm a clinical counselor. Uh, I've been working with Lumara for uh, quite a few years now, supporting families and um, youth through uh, grief and loss of their loved ones. Um, I also work for a hospice society here um, and spend quite a bit of time in schools working with young ones who have experienced loss of loved ones in their life. And I'm Catherine, and I too am immersed in this space, if you will, um, holding conversations each and every day about loss and um, trauma and honored to do this work uh, in part through my connection with Numara. So let's dive into our books for today. Uh, we have a grief informed book that we're going to dip into. Um, uh, as you'll see, we have two types of books, ones where the book, the grief informed is one that's uh, sort of at a higher level, not explicitly talking about death. Maybe it's more about emotions and grief focus then gets into uh, specific kinds of, of losses and death conversations. So today our book is the goodbye book. And as you see there, it is a grief informed book. So Tara, what's a brief synopsis of this one? Sure. So the goodbye book, um, it features a little fish in a fishbowl throughout the entirety of the book. Um, and what we see happens is that the fish had another fish in the bowl with it and um, the fish is no longer there. So the, the orange fish is going through a variety of experiences saying goodbye to their um, fish friend in terms of um, you know, some of the loneliness they might feel, some of the questions around where the fish went and what the fish is doing now, um, some things like not really feeling like eating anymore. Um, it highlights essentially some of the experiences that we have when we are grieving and saying goodbye to somebody. Um, so we get to see a variety of the experiences that um, orange fish experiences um, near to the end of the book the fish begins to remember some of the happier times that they had together and they're beginning to feel um, feel a bit more full, a bit more um, courageous, a bit more like they want to talk to, um, you know, a friend on the outside of the fishbowl. Um, and so essentially just highlighting their their journey. Uh, the book is, is quite uh, simplistic. I say that in a positive way, um, simplistic in terms of simple um, art and very short and to the point sentences. Um, so it's it's an easy to read book. And it is never mentioned in the book that the, the goodbye is around death in particular, which is why um, we chose to put it in the grief informed category. Um, because it is, it's about saying goodbye. So good, go goodbye can be, you know, your friend moving away, a divorce happening, just all, all the things and places that uh, we, we say goodbye to in, in the natural course of life. And so I'm gathering that's well, one of the things I, you read the book to me, and that was one of the things that I really liked about the book was that it acknowledges that there's many goodbyes in a lifetime, different kinds of goodbyes, and we have emotions around all of them. And so the range of emotions, I really resonated with that um, when you read me the book. So um, I'm imagining others would uh, connect with that as well. Anything else you particularly like about the book? 
Um, yeah, I mean, just, you know, similarly, for example, I live and work in a community where um, people move a lot. So, you know, a lot of times when I'm working with young people, it's, you, you know, there's usually I'm working with young people who have lost a, a loved one by death. However, there's um, additional losses, like their best friend moved away last year and, you know, their family got a job somewhere else and are going to this place. So um, I appreciate a book that that just talks about a goodbye. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and how to honor those endings, those those kind of goodbyes, so that when there are other, I don't want to say bigger, but potentially yes. you feel more significant that someone has died, for example, then some capacities built around around saying goodbye and remembering, right? which is also yeah. an important part of the grieving process. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so who is best served by this book? Um, you mentioned this, this sort of the very simple and straightforward. So I'm imagining that supports a younger age range. Other yeah, I would suggest um, three to seven years old. Mm -hmm. um, and because the the a fish in a fishbowl, absolutely, totally neutral. Um, you know, we're really able to to allow any um, demographic to to kind of feel that neutrality and and not feel included or discluded from the story okay any particular considerations anything to for for parents or teachers to just sort of think about when using this book um nothing comes to mind for me again it, it's very um it's again like that's uh, that simplicity in a in a positive way yeah we're not um we're not diving too deep um yeah it's, yeah. It's, other than sounds like other than the context of goodbyes, um, it it's it's pretty open to be um, used for whatever kind of goodbye might be relevant um, for the the child's uh, scenario. So okay. So some ideas around how this book might be used. Yeah. So um, the first one is writing a goodbye letter. Um, so a goodbye letter essentially can express the love that you have for your person. And again, we talked about the importance of remembering. So an opportunity to share favorite memories. So for example, if you're working one-on-one -on -one with um, a young person, you can be a support person in allowing them to write a, a goodbye letter. Maybe they're old enough to write their own letter, or if they're not old enough, you can be the scribe for them and you can write for them. Uh, you have the option of putting the letter in the mail. Um, so if this is someone who is um, alive, you can send it to the address that they've moved to if you have it, for example. Um, of course, that would be less of a goodbye letter and more of a hello, I miss you letter. Um, and if they've died, you can still put the um, letter in the mail if you like and leave it unaddressed. Um, or you can choose to put that letter in a special place, um, wherever that might be, in a, in a box or somewhere in outside yeah anywhere let it yeah and I'm imagining you could include um a drawing with the letter or something if you know all all kinds of ways that that could be um um expanded on to uh, again to support the child integrating this goodbye experience yeah. yes yeah we love art and drawing at Lumera <laughs> we do we really do <laughs> we do <laughs> Good. Hey, and I'm excited about creating a terrarium. Yeah, um, so inspired by the book and the um, fishbowl, which is featured throughout the entire book, um, the opportunity to make your own terrarium. So a terrarium is basically when you have, um, you know, a glass or, or plastic space um, and you can, you know, fill the space with some dirt and rocks and um, pieces of nature. And basically you're creating your own mini little ecosystem in, inside of um, inside of your fishbowl. If you're unsure or unfamiliar with terrariums, a quick um, search in the computer online will give you lots of different examples of, of terrarium um, and how to make a terrarium. And so you can create your own with um, filling it with items from your natural landscape create your own ecosystem or you can just fill it with things are, that are beautiful so you can just fill it with gemstones or rocks and art and maybe some pictures or anything that um the young person who you're working with is is called to do really allowing them to have creative agency over what they want to create and some prompts that might be useful in this activity 
are you could offer the prompt of um, how about we create a space that you think your loved one would have really appreciated. Um, and that could be the sort of theme as you're building this and they're thinking, oh, you know, grandma loved the color pink. So I'm going to make sure some pink is in here, for example, or, um, you know, whatever that might be. Um, you can also offer the prompt of the parallel between tending to the terrarium and tending to your own self-care. So of course, we're always encouraging ways for young people to care for themselves. And so the way that you tend to a garden, the way you tend to your terrarium, uh, how that mirrors um, self-care and just the value of creating quiet space. So, you know, there's the quiet space that um, can be offered for the young person to get into the creative space of actually making the terrarium. And then there's this, you know, beautiful thing that has been created after that is, you know, symbolic of this kind of really beautiful, quiet bubble space. Um, and so, you know, really pulling that into how we can create and value quiet spaces in our life um, to allow for, for healing and um, support and being with our grief. Yeah. I, I'm connecting with replotting some plants I did recently and how sort of uh, the connecting with the dirt and the aliveness and the meditation of that activity. And I'm, I'm just, my own way of interpreting a, a terrarium in a fishbowl from my vantage point. So yeah. 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 We really, um, we, we do well at processing through activities like this, mm -hmm. using our hands and yeah, just getting into that sort of meditative and creative space is it's really good for our, for our beings. Yes, it's lovely. Okay, and as always, we will have a handout on this book that outlines these activities. And um, lovely again to have a conversation today, Tara. See you next time. Yes, it is. Sounds great. Thank you.